Uh, this is the latest development in an already active season for the Pacific. And of course, we're keeping our, our eye on this one very closely because it could affect the West Coast. This is a system that is headed perhaps into California, bringing some potential for very heavy wind and tropical moisture to the state of California and across the Southwest. And we keep our eye on this one with 40 mile an hour winds moving west northwest at 14 miles an hour. The pressure right now at 1,002 millibars. Let's bring in Fox Weather Hurricane Specialist Brian Norcross. We look at this situation, Brian. Uh, we know the Atlantic is kind of heating up. Maybe that tropical rain plays out for the Western Gulf. No guarantee there. But this turns interesting as we start with the analysis now with Tropical Storm Hillary, the next name on the list and potentially with a West Coast impact. Yeah, so this is a very uh, interesting and unusual situation. It's not unprecedented, like never, ever, ever happened to have uh, some sort of tropical system come toward California. Uh, it's happened actually a couple times. We had what would be a name system in the historical record book. But this, because of the freaky nature of the weather pattern, where we have this super strong uh, heat dome over the central part of the country, and then this unusually sharp uh, dip in the jet stream along the west coast is going to make a river of air uh, moving almost due north that's going to take not just Hillary, but the moisture from Hillary, which I think is going to be the more important uh, aspect of this, on north. Now, the question is, how does it impact the mountains of Southern California, and how does it impact the uh, southwest and, and actually points north? There's a very strong river of uh, air going from Mexico all the way up uh, along the west coast, but inland of the west coast. And the little bit of deviation makes a lot of difference on who gets a lot of rain. We just got the advisory in. The Hurricane Center takes it up to 120 mile an hour hurricane and then uh, then quickly weakens it as the waters get colder as it gets to North Carolina or North Carolina to California and um, they're bringing have it let me see on the latitude about 30 degrees north down to a 60 mile an hour and what's called a post tropical storm in other words non tropical but none of that makes any difference in terms of the uh, intensity of the storm moving north I'm waiting for to see the cone if you guys uh, have the there you okay? What were you, what you're seeing on your screen there? Uh, that's the uh, is that the wind or the more that's the confidence track confidence. But here's what's important about this, and and I think this is really important point to make, and we're going to have to make this point a lot over the next few days. The track of the center is not important here. The track of the moisture is what's important because when tropical moisture interacts with very sharp, intense, um, uh, steep mountains in, like you have in Southern California with sh uh, very defined valleys, that's when you get really significant flooding threat. So there you see all the possible areas for the low center. And here is uh, one possibility for that track of moisture. And you can see the river uh, moving north. I was just looking to see what the National Hurricane Center, what I wanted to see was uh, where they put the, the uh, cone exactly here. They just came out with their their cone. Let me see. Uh, do we have it? As you're looking, as you're looking at that, not? Brian, a couple of things I'm notating okay. from their discussion is that there's the possibility here of some rapid intensification. Uh, the question here I bring up uh, initially is that we're going to have enough warmth uh, in over the waters there for that to happen. Looks like the National Hurricane Center is outlining um, some potential here for rapid intensification. Uh, maybe the storm gets a little stronger as it moves closer to the coastline. Also notating the large swells that could come in with Hillary. Um, but as you mentioned, and as you point out, that moisture could be so uh, important to watch for the southern portions of California. Keep in mind, this is a state that's been beaten down. We have burn scars from recent wildfires. We had the atmospheric rivers earlier in the year. We had exceptional snowfall. All of the reservoirs are high. This water could really uh, put the state of California up against uh, an interesting development as we see Hillary come closer. 
Yeah, so a couple of points there, Amy. First of all, the water is very warm off the coast of Mexico when you're south of the Baja California mm -hmm. area. So th that's why they're forecasting under really excellent uh, atmospheric conditions from the storm standpoint that it could intensify and they're forecasting 120 mile an hour category three hurricane off Mexico. But then the water gets much cooler very fast when you get to the northern part of Mexico and up towards Southern California. So that's why we expect to see significant weakening of the uh, strongest winds. So even if this were to come right to the California coast, the winds would not be, you know, hurricane strength, categories of hurricane and, and so forth. But the thing is, that doesn't affect the moisture. The moisture is going to get trapped into that flow moving north. And so the moisture, I think, will end up being the biggest issue, along with extremely high surf, which can be dangerous along the California coast. In terms of what's previously happened, I think a little bit of, of good news is that the, those atmospheric rivers and whatnot have generally affected the f northern part of the state. California is a giant state. So indeed, reservoirs are high and, and uh, northern California is super green like I haven't seen it in uh, decades since I lived in northern California, as a matter of fact. But that is mostly north. The, the issue of this Moisture coming from the south is going to impact the southland of California and uh, San Diego area first and up into the Los Angeles area. But also the deserts, even Palm Springs and out uh, in the desert could uh, see significant dangerous rain from uh, in the arroyos from uh, this kind of uh, moisture feed if it concentrates in those areas and we're just not sure. Is it gonna to concentrate to the west of the mountains where millions and millions, uh, tens of millions of people live or would it concentrate to the east of the mountains which is more uh, the desert uh, communities out that way which is not that that's not a problem but that's a different kind of problem than people that live in this uh, very high terrain where when it rains hard, the water gets concentrated in those valleys uh, coming down to the lower elevations, Amy. Yeah, not not to um, not to mention as you as you talked about a little bit there, these areas that are typically dry, so too much moisture too soon could cause the big problems. Our track confidence map there showing it in red, pretty good confidence at this point. Still several days to go. San Diego's forecast already incorporating this by Sunday into Monday with some tropical moisture coming in. I really liked the breakdown that you that you offered there, Brian, with talking about the ocean temperatures because folks who live in SoCal are going to say, "What well, the water off of uh, you know." LA and San Diego and stuff, that's not warm water, but it is warm enough down there along the coast of Mexico, which, which we've watched set up here for quite some time and is traditional for that portion of the country. But the ebb and flow between those waters is where we see maybe a reassurance that this is not a huge hurricane, but it doesn't mm -hmm. downplay the threats that could still be translated into the weather um, in, in heavy showers and rain. So this is such important messaging as you look at the storm and another indicator why the category of storms don't necessarily equate to the threats it can present um, on land. Amy, uh, I just see that now the detailed forecast from the Hurricane Center. They're putting a 60-mile-an-hour tropical storm, right, uh, or tropical storm equivalent. Technically, it wouldn't be tropical anymore, but, uh, but who cares, uh, at the Mexican border just south of San Diego. And that would be 7 a.m. Monday morning, and this is all Pacific time, so uh, late morning um, or I, mean, I guess they're on central time there. So this is a this is a Monday morning Eastern time overnight, uh, Sunday night uh, Pacific time. But the moisture is well ahead of that. So the moisture moving in to uh, Southern California is a Saturday into Sunday, especially, and then Monday and Tuesdays. So this is a, a multi-day event uh, according to the best computer forecasts that we have at the moment, but this could also be a significant windstorm for uh, extreme northern Mexico, the Tijuana area, and uh, San Diego County in uh, Southern California. And then the moisture, the big, big threat for heavy rain, flooding rains moving north from south to north uh, through California and the southwest.
This is going to be a lot for us to watch. Thanks for your expertise. We'll be checking in with you throughout the day. Brian Norcross, the Fox Weather Hurricane Specialist with us as we look at the Pacific storm that could impact California in the coming days. I'm Amy Freeze. Welcome to Fox Weather's YouTube page. We have more great videos on the way, so make sure to subscribe to stay updated on all things weather.